To be honest, I'm at a point whereby I'm not sure what viewers want to see or hear about in golf club reviews anymore. Only negative titles gain any traction, but then the very same people who complain about clickbait get further agitated when a review highlights the positive aspects of a new golf club's performance. I'd call it a lose-lose situation. So today I'll be giving my brutally dishonest appraisal of the new Mizuno GPX HL irons in the hope that my dishonesty gains me popularity amongst those who just love to hate. The bitter and twisted brigade who think that grandiose marketing campaigns only exist in the world of golf. Or I could do what I always do, provide you with honest feedback on my thoughts on how these things perform, who I feel they may suit and have Mizuno done what they set out to achieve in their marketing campaign. Oh, and to be clear, I couldn't give a flying f whether you buy these clubs or any others for that matter. So for those who want to complain about the price, are discontent with marketing departments, have issues with the loft of an iron, the spend your money on lessons crew, let me offer you some very simple advice. Stop watching product reviews, you clowns. Right, let's crack on, shall we? Super high launch, and to be fair, a nice easy swing as well. Yeah, both very similar, just my own swing, just slightly left the target, but again, seems to have grabbed and stopped fairly quick as well. Now that is a hugely different ball flight. I'm definitely doing what it says on the tin. That was a five iron, would you believe, and went up in the air like a, like a seven or eight iron. One thing's for sure, these things launch the ball extremely high. I'm picking the ball up really clean, but uh, at the moment, everything of mine is going down the left-hand side. But what you'll notice there, another good high launching ball. The barometer I was trying to use there is uh, 150 to the middle of the green. I think it's probably just about got there. So for me, there's a couple of things happening. The ball is launching extremely high, that will help a number of golfers and these irons are doing what they set out to do. That's one of the things they set out to do. But the compromise is that's gonna spin a little. And for me, from, my, from what I'm looking for, I don't struggle to get the ball up in the air. It means I'm just dropping off a little bit in distance. So you've got to understand what you're buying into here. You're buying into a product that is higher launching, higher spinning. It's gonna help a lot of golfers with a slower swing speed. Right, those three irons you just see me hit are from the new lineup of JPX irons from Mizuno. But I've got one particular interest in a model that's known as the HL. I think it's got the huge appeal to the masses, will help a number of golfers. And what I wanna identify in today's video is have Mizuno set out what they intended to do and make a set of irons that is higher launching for slower swing speed golfers. Should be good, run out a bit more. Not quite enough, and we'll talk about the sound and feel. How can you not when you're dealing with a Mizuno product? That's a little gap wedge that I'll be talking about later on. But the three irons in question really out here are the five, the seven, and the nine iron. They're from the JPX HL. We've got two other models. As ever, there's the JPX Hot Metal and there's JPX Hot Metal Pro. And I'm kind of stuck away from them two products and my only focus right now is on the HL model. And it's for the reason that I have just suggested. If you have a look at them, I mean, very much a personal opinion thing. I think it's perhaps a little bit of a dated look. I love what they've done with the 245 and 244, is it lineup, 243 lineup? stunning set of irons minimalistic in their markings whereas for me just a little bit busy and like i said a slightly outdated look for my eye but what i will say as ever clearly visible that this is a very well manufactured piece of kit from mizuno i should have referenced these are all hot metal this is the hot metal hl version and what makes it different well first of all it's very much the kind of uh, the game improvement style in terms of the size and that means we've got a fairly thick bottom line some interesting shaping and profiling which is quite a bit different than uh, the normal uh, i would say top line is i'm okay i'm comfortable with it but that's certainly the market these are aimed at and i think whilst i mention that a brief one for those who struggle with what the concept of a review is 
A lot of people suggest that every review is positive. There's two reasons for that. It's because there's not really much product out there right now that isn't very good. So if you're looking for negativity, you're gonna to struggle to find it. The second thing is that when I review a product, I review it on behalf of the person that I think might want to use it. So it's not always from my perspective. It's not about me swapping clubs all the time. It's about me showing a potential customer of Mizuno's what they are gonna get. And by no means am I trying to persuade somebody who's happy with a set of irons to buy a new set and not selling a dream. So let's just clear that up as well. And in terms of the HL, I think it's a real interesting product for a lot of golfers for the reasons that I've already talked about. And what I'm seeing so far, on the golf course at least, is they're doing what it says on the tin. Five iron at launch is extremely high, which can be really difficult for a lot of golfers with slower swing speeds. So what I want to do right now, is let's jump back inside, and I'm just going to get some Trackman data, and just let's have a look at the numbers and see if it marries up with what's happening out here on the golf course. Right, so I've brought two of those irons inside to Chester and North Wales Golf Academy to get on Trackman. I brought in the five and the seven iron, because to me, that is where we're going to see have Mizuno achieve what they set out to do. Don't forget, it's a high launch product. So what is a seven iron launching at? Well, in this case, it's 21.3 degrees. I've tried to slow the club head speed down to 76.1 because these again are aimed at slower swing speeds. And we've got a carry distance of 152. You then jump down this other end, that peak height 85 feet. Again, that's a high ball flight, so high launching, that's what we're trying to achieve. And a real good descent angle of 45 degrees. I'm scrubbing the spin number. I don't care what anyone says. Whatever you achieve indoor on a mat is nothing like what I achieve out on the golf course, but take that from that what you will. But all those numbers, I would say, yeah, Mizuno have done a good job. This is a high launching product. You've set out what you wanted to achieve. But then going to the five iron, the first worry I have with the five iron is I only managed to carry distance of 166. So first of all, we've got a problem because I've got a gapping issue because my 152 carry in a seven iron has no room for a six iron to go in between. So that's something we'll talk about later on in the video. But the launch angle of the five iron is really good, 19.9 degrees, as is that peak height, as is that descent angle. So all those data parameters have been achieved. That is what Mizuno set out to do, and we can't criticize, but the one thing it highlights yet again is there is certainly no need for a full set of irons in the long end of the bag, because somewhere, something has got to drop out. And in this case, it looks like it would be a six iron. So I mentioned three models in this lineup, and uh, I just want to show you the lofts of each of the three. Um, it's always really interesting to me that the pro version is the strongest lofted. We're looking at seven irons right now in particular. Uh, don't really understand that and never have done. I was confused with it last time around, still pretty confused now. It's generally the weaker loft, the pro version, but this HL concept, they're kind of, they're strong lofted um, to a degree, but I think pretty normal to what we're used to nowadays. But it's the way the club is built in terms of that width of sole and the position of the CG that's allowing them to move that way back and get that high launch. That concept I understand, and that concept, like I said, is one that you need uh, to recognize that you need that help in your game. And from what you've just seen from the dry ball data and what I've seen on the golf course, they're clearly achieving that. The only problem is when you start to get a little bit quicker with the swing speed, and I probably fall into that category out here on the golf course, the spin number is probably starting to rise a little bit. They're launching just a bit too high, and I'm definitely losing a little bit of yardage that I wouldn't necessarily choose to. That's delightful. That is so good. Such a good ball flight. And uh, it's gone plenty far enough. It's certainly not, doesn't feel like it's firing off the club face. And like the sound and feel element, I said I'd mentioned, that's the five iron. They, they feel really, really good. And I've never found that in the hot metal lineup, and this chrome alloy, I've never found it to be uh, like what I would always consider to be a nothing sound, uh, feels like a Mizuno, but I would say this has softened up hugely, uh, both, I suppose they're the same thing, sound and feel. I say this in every video. Yes, I know some people, it doesn't make a great deal to, but for me, it's an important element and they feel really, really good. And I'd say that's one of the major improvements between this and the last time around two years ago. Such a good pickup. Such a good pickup. Probably lost my ball. I'm not sure where I was aiming there, but I just went straight out right. 
yeah another good pickup that's a seven iron just coming up just that little bit short again unfortunately again just um high ball flight there's no doubt about these launch high but for me i'm just into a tad a breeze there just hovers a little bit and there's definitely come up short to target and something that you'd have to be sort of mindful of so so in, in an evaluation of these clubs i'd say that they definitely do what they are attempting to do at mizuno so for me that's very much a positive i really like the irons i think they do uh, they tick a lot of boxes for me that sound and feel the lux element like i said perhaps a little bit dated and needs a bit of an upgrade for me a bit of a cleaner visual but performance wise sound and feel really good and like i said high launching so they're not i really like them but i ain't going to put them in my bag just so everybody kind of understands that that's not the concept but what i am recommending that is anybody struggling out there right now with launching their irons and their swing speed is a little bit slower then this is a definite consideration if you want to buy some new irons right that's me done you can see there's a bit of a rant in this video because i'm a bit annoyed at some of the comments that are made that are quite ludicrous at times i hope you grasp the concept those who struggle and those of you who are level-headed enough and understand that if you want a new set of irons right now and this is the kind of thing you're looking for from my opinion they're well worth considering right enjoy the video hope you uh got some feedback that is relevant to this video stick it in the comment section down below and i'll do my best to try and have a little bit of a conversation with you thanks for watching i'll see you all soon